Today I wanted to talk about motors, but not just motors, what it is that you find in a, let's say a compressor for example, because whether you're looking at a fan or you're looking at a compressor, the motor, the piece that drives that mechanism is all going to be the same. We said before that on a three-phase motor, basically you're going to have your three legs coming in here. So you're going to have, let's say, T1, T2, and then T3 right there. Now, whether you're talking about a compressor or a fan motor, this is what you're going to find. Now, sometimes, depending on the you know what you do you may also find them in a delta configuration so you would have t1 t2 t3 like this so whether you y or delta configuration on what we call a three phase system they're going to be basically the same thing whether it's a compressor or a fan motor. But I wanted to talk about single phase motors first. Let's talk about single phase motors. So now, on, on a single phase motor, what is it that you're going to find? You're still going to find the two windings in there. Instead of having three, you're going to find two. Now, you're going to have basically what they call, well, you're going to have a winding like this. And then you're going to have another winding like this. So you're going to have these windings and you're still going to have the three connections on it, just like on a three phase motor. But before we get into that, okay, let's get in, let's say that we have this winding here. And if I was to take a reading, an ohm reading between here and here, Let's say in this example, I would get uh, eight ohms like this. I have eight ohms on this one here. So now, if I was to make a connection, let's say right here, and if I took an ohm reading, if I get between here and here, let's say in this example, I would get two ohms. Well, that t that's two ohms out of the eight. So that means that on this one here, I would get a total of six ohms like this. I would get six ohms because six plus two, that equals eight. If we look at it this way, let's look at another, let's look at another one. Uh, if we do this one here and we end up with between here and here, let's say we have seven. I put a connection here and I would have, let's say, um, three here. On this one here, I will get four. So you have four, five, six, and seven. Four plus seven give, four plus three gives you seven. So that's how that would work. Okay, now let's take a look at how we're how this and this come together because we see that we have the two connections here on each end and we have this one in the middle this one in the middle happens to be connected to this winding and it happens to be connected to that winding like this because of that then we can say that this one is common to both windings this connection here is common to this one and is common to this one now on a single phase motor, you can have the two windings just like this. But one of them is gonna be what they call the start winding. The other one is going to be your run winding. The one that has the highest resistance is always your start winding. The one with the least resistance, that's going to be your run winding. So on here we have seven. This one here is going to be common to the two of them. It's common to this one and it's common to that one because it's connected to both of those. It's connected to them. Now, because this is common, this will be my start winding. Why is this my start? Because four is greater than three. This has the highest resistance, so now that will be my start winding. This one here, this will be my run winding. 
So now, if I take a if I take a look at these two here, I see that let's say for example I take and I read. I take an ohm reading across these two right here. When I take an ohm reading, I'm going to get, let's say, 8 ohms right there. I've got 8. Now that tells me that from here, all the way to here, is going to be 8, just like it was 8 from here all the way to here. Now, because of that, this one here, this connection here, because there will be a connection here, that's going to be common. If I was to take a reading between here and here, then I would get 6. If I took a reading between here and here, then I would end up with a 2 right there. So this tells me that this would be my common connection, this would be my start, and this one would be my run connection like this. Now on a, on a compressor, when you look at a compressor, you always see that it has the terminal connections like this. You have the three connections. One of these is going to be common, the other one is going to be your start, and the other one is going to be your run winding like this. And inside, that's what's happening. We have a winding here, and then we have a winding here. But the start winding is going to have a lot more windings in it. Because of that, it has more resistance, it has the high resistance. So when we check between, let's say here and here, we may get 10 ohms. When we check between here and here, then we may get, let's say, 7. We check between here and here, then we might get, let's say, we're going to get 3 right there. We're going to end up with 3 right there because 7 plus 3 equals 10. This is my start winding, and that's going to be my run winding like this. Now, let's take a look at the single phase compressor again. But this time, we're walking up to a unit or the supervisor has given us a compressor to put in and it's not labeled. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the cover off of the, of the terminal connection. We're going to see a circle with three dots on it. We're going to pull our ohmmeter out and we're going to see that between here and here, let's say that we have 12 ohms right here between here and here, we end up with, let's say, uh, 10 ohms, and between here and here, we end up with 2. Because of that, this is our highest reading. That tells me that there is a winding here, and there's a winding right there. So now, that's our, those are our two windings here. Because of that, I know that this one is going to be my common. This one here, has the highest resistance of the two windings, this will be my start. So this one here will have to be my run like this. Again, what I did is I came here and I took my readings. I looked at the highest one and that was telling me that on the other two I had a winding here and a winding here. That makes this common. Then this one here was 10 ohms. This one here was 2 ohms, that tells me that this is my start winding and this is my run. That's my run. So now let's take, let's take a look at this one more time and then we'll talk about something else real quick. Again, our supervisor gave us a motor to go put in and it's not labeled. I take my ohmmeter out and I read between here and here and I get, let's say, I get nine. I take read between here and here and I get uh, let's say 12 between here and here and uh, whoops between here and here and let's say I get uh, I take a reading I get three okay so now I see that nine plus three that gives me 12. 
This is my highest reading. So this connection right here, this connection has to be my common. Now, that tells me that there's a winding here. And then there's going to be another winding right there. This winding has more resistance on it than that one. Because of that, I know that this one has to be my start and this one has to be my run like this. Okay, now, why do we need to know this? Well, again, we just got this compressor handed to us and we have to go put it in and it's not labeled. But let's take a look at this now as to why this is important. Okay, so why was all of that important? It is important because now we know which connection is which, but how do we wire this up? We know that we're going to have on a single face, we're going to have L1 and we're going to have L2. Because of that, we're going to take, in this example, let's say we'll take L1 and we're going to run this on over to the common like this. We run L1 to the common. It could have been L2, but in this example, I'm running L1 to it just to make things a little bit easier. We're going to take L2 and we're going to feed this on over to run. Now in class, typically what I always tell the students is the same line that feeds the run winding always feeds the capacitor. So the same line that feeds the run winding always feeds the capacitor and the capacitor always feeds the start winding. That's how they go wired. This is how you would wire a single phase compressor that was not labeled and you first have to find out which one is your common, which one is your start, and which one is your run winding. Once you do that, you feed one of the legs to the common, then the other one to the run winding, and the same line that feeds the run winding has to feed the run capacitor, and the capacitor always feeds the start winding. This is very important because this I've seen this happen where things are not labeled and the guys gets a little, get a little confused. But hopefully this helps. And again, my name is Julio. Uh, make sure you follow me on Facebook, subscribe to my page on YouTube, uh, to my channel on YouTube. And if you have any suggestions, let me know. Thank you.